Hey, this is Jay, and this is self-hosted N8N running in Docker with some Whisper thrown in. Um, so my last few videos have mostly been about self-hosted N8N running directly on your machine. Uh, but in this one, we are going to wrap all of it in a Docker container. Uh, so this has a few benefits and also a few drawbacks. Um, I probably wouldn't totally recommend running it in Docker uh, if you, unless you really need to. Uh, but it does come with the convenience that Docker kind of then uh, manages all of, all of your uh, dependencies. So you really just have to run one command and you can get this whole system up and running. Um, but it does make things a little less accessible uh, where it's, uh, if it were to just be running on your self-hosted machine instead. Um, but we can get to that. So really, yeah, the main requirement for this is just to have Docker installed because we need to be able to run a Docker compose command. So once you've got Docker set up, um, then you are good to go. Uh, I will point out that uh, N8N does offer their own Docker solution. So if you wanted to run their self-hosted AI starter kit, um, they do have a repository available for that. So once you've got Docker up and running, you could just run this instead. Um, this is definitely more geared towards running an AI agent. Um, so they provide you with the N8N app itself, um, Olama, so that you can download uh, an, an open source AI like DeepSeek, um, Qdrint, which is for uh, a vector store, so you could add a bunch of um, documents to reference, and then Postgres is mostly just for uh, the database for N8N to operate. Um, so that repo is available here, so uh, that's a, good, a great place to start. Mostly if you just wanted to do like an AI agent kind of deal. Um, I, on the other hand, wanted to kind of start uh, something a little bit different. So I was hoping to create this self-hosted uh, video starter kit, uh, which is a little more video uh, focused. So uh, in this project, instead, I want to have uh, like the Whisper service uh, running so that we can transcribe video. Uh, and then I do have FFmpeg installed in here as well. Um, so we're ready to start manipulating uh, video as well and, and audio. Um, but I don't have the FFmpeg part exposed yet. Um, really, this is just a super simple version one. Um, it just has a Whisper transcription service. Um, I will get to some of the other services in the future, uh, but I just thought this would be a good place to start. Um, but this is like a nice, really, uh, a really nice foundation just for being able to manipulate video as far as, uh, you know, being able to read in transcripts and get content out of, uh, out of videos. Um, so uh, this is something that I will provide. I'll have links for this uh, in the description. Um, but as far as the workflow goes for this project, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Again, we're just going to read in a file. So we're going to look at a video, get the transcript from that video, uh, and then write it out. So just grab the text from the video. Um, so pretty straightforward, but a pretty good example of how to run this in the Docker container and think about this a little bit more differently than just running self-hosted and on your machine. Um, so obviously the big first requirement here is Docker, uh, getting the entire Docker system running. Um, so once you've got the, the repo downloaded, um, I'm, I've got it pulled up here in a uh, uh, cursor. So uh, if you have not used cursor, definitely worth checking it out. I'd say it's well worth the $20 a month um, to be able to have the AI assistant on the side. Um, so it can definitely help you out if you do get stuck having uh, trying to get this project up and running. Um, but I do have some instructions in here. Really, the main thing is once you've got this repo downloaded and good to go, um, the only real requirement after Docker is that, is that you have to fill in the .env file. Um, so the project will include a .env .example, um, but you'll have to create your own .env. That's, you know, typically you don't want to include that in a repository. Um, that's typically where you store the uh, values that you don't want to share, like your password. Um, technically, uh, if you wanted, you could just copy this and just uh, run it like this. If you're just running it locally, it doesn't really matter. Um, you, could, you, could, you could technically just use this to get up and running. Um, but if you were to go and deploy this out, so if you wanted to put this Docker... Uh, set up into the cloud. So you wanted to go run it in AWS or DigitalOcean or whatever. Um, you probably want to step up your game as far as uh, making these values a little bit more secure and setting those up in those environments out there. Um, but anyway, there is a .env example to get you started so you can fill out your own .env file. Um, so once you've got that, that is that will be required. It's going to be looking for those values though. Um, and then, um, then you should be good to go. So the only command that you need to run is docker compose up dash dash build. Uh, and that's kind of two commands in one. Um, the Docker compose up is what would start running the images once they're created. Um, but you have to do a build first if it's your first time. You can't just run it directly. You have to like, get everything downloaded and running first or downloaded and available first. Then you can run it. Um, so I've already got it running, but let's go ahead and, and stop it real quick. And so this, I think, yeah, since I've already had it running, uh, it's already kind of pre-compiled everything. But the first time you run it, it probably will actually take a couple minutes, like lit literally, you know, 230 something seconds or whatever um, to because it has to download everything uh, and then compile it and get it ready to go. So expect that command to take a little while. 
Um, and again, back to cursor, super useful if something comes up and it doesn't look like this. Um, ideally, you should see both that um, we are running, we're going to be running Whisper on port 9000. So you should see something like that. Uh, and then also uh, N8N should hopefully start running on localhost 5678. Um, so if you don't see something like that, you can just plug this. I mean, the, usually it pops up in uh, in the corner here in the in the terminal. You can do add to chat and you can just add it to the, the cursor chat on the side and you can just ask it, you know, hey, what's this error mean? What do I do to fix it? Um, but ideally, none of that happens. You're good to go. Docker is composed and updated. Um, and then you can come into localhost 5678 and you're good to go with your self-hosted in, in like normal. Uh, again, you may... Um, if it's your first time again running it, um, you'll probably have to set up a user. So it'll ask for like your email and then your first name, last name. Um, basically just need to set up your basic user so you can get back into the N8N app, um, this version running in Docker because it's like a completely new instance. Uh, so after that, you're, you know, greeted with your normal home screen. Um, you can do, I think it's like start from scratch or, you know, try an AI agent setup. Um, but I'm just going to go back into my old uh, workflow. And like I mentioned, the workflow is going to be pretty straightforward, but again, we're just, we're back in the, the N8N situation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of delete all this and start from scratch. So uh, the only thing here, I guess, is that like normally I would, uh, if we're running self-hosted, like you could have access to something like local file. Uh, but in this case, that's a little bit harder to do just because technically we're inside of the Docker container now, which is different from your computer. Um, so it's a little bit harder to trigger. Um, I did create uh, a bit of a back door here. So as part of the setup for this, I actually made it so that there is a shared file or a shared folder rather within the project. So I created the, the shared data folder uh, in the actual repo uh, and it, it automatically mounts that inside of Docker. So anything that goes in the shared data folder on your computer will automatically be moved into the Docker container under the shared folder. Um, so you kind of have a way to transfer stuff in and out of the Docker container. Um, so that's definitely only if you're running on your machine like this, like I'm just running on my computer. If you were to go deploy this out uh, on, you know, whatever in the cloud, um, that might not be super useful. You'd just be back to like triggering off of, you know, Google Docs or something like that. So anyway, just wanted to touch on that. Um, so I can't use local file because we can't really, I mean, we could, we could probably set up another way to like trigger that. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to start with a trigger, a uh, manual trigger. Uh, and then I'm going to save a couple values. So since I just went over that, um, I am going to save, so I'm just going to call something, I'm going to create a Docker folder and I'm going to call that shared. Like I mentioned, that's the folder that, uh, Docker sees, um, if we put a file into it. And then, uh, in this case, since we don't really have a trigger, I'm just going to say, I wanted to create a file name of video test or sorry, test video one dot MP4. Cause that's the file we're going to test with. Um, so I'm just going to set those values for reference in the future. So I don't have to keep typing them out. Um, but yeah, now, uh, back to just kind of the normal old, uh, workflow system of, I want to read our video file in read files from disk. And that's why I created these values. Cause now I can just say, okay, I want to read the file from the shared folder. Uh, and I want to read the name of the file, which is right here. Um, so again, I've, I've kind of pre-prepared this. And like I said, this is the shared data folder. So this is the self-hosted video kit folder. Uh, and then inside of that, I have a shared data folder. Um, so I went ahead and dropped in a video here. So whatever you put in here, uh, the Docker container will have access to because it's just, it's mounting that automatically. Um, so in this case, we should be able to read that file. And there we go. So we've got the binary for that. Uh, and again, that's just because I, I kind of cheated and named it that. Uh, but we're good to go on that. So we've read our video file. Uh, now we have the binary ready to reference. Um, so the next thing is we're going to try to transcribe it. Um, so we just want to send that video file off to our Whisper service, which is contained in our Docker Docker setup. Um, so I guess to kind of, again, you don't have to go over this too much, um, but if you're going to change things around, then you may need to know this. Um, there, The Whisper service is running, uh, and there's a, just a, a super simple system right now of a post API for uh, slash transcribe. So that's how we access the Whisper service. Um, this will just take in the video file or audio file, uh, and it's just going to provide back the transcript text only. Um, no, no segment uh, timestamps or word timestamps yet. Well, um, I do want to add that eventually for sure, because that's, that's super useful as well. Um, but for now, it's just going to provide the text. So just a kind of a simple system to get you started. Uh, but it is going to look in that shared folder, so it kind of knows what to do. But we can provide the file directly just to be safe. So anyway, um, 
we are going to call that, but we have to access, I guess, that service in terms of uh, inside of the Docker container. Um, so we're going to do an HTTP request. Um, we're going to do a method of post. Uh, and then I think I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, we can't do localhost because it's all within the context of like the Docker network. That's what the whole Docker compose functionality is. Um, it basically created two containers that networked them together. Um, so we have to call them or uh, have them reference each other properly. So in this case, we can do host.docker.internal uh, at port 9000 slash subscribe or transcribe. So that's how you uh, would access the Whisper service based on how it's set up. Um, no authentication needed, no query params. We're going to do a, a post body instead. Um, no headers needed. Uh, very, very straightforward. Uh, we are going to do form data, though. Uh, and rather than a form data type, we are going to do an in in binary file. Uh, and in this case, the parameter name is just file. So yeah, it's declared here. So we just need to pass in the file. And then um, we are using n8n's binary data handling here. So it, it automatically knows like, okay, that's my, that's my binary to send. Um, so that should be good to go. Um, and that's it. So we send that off and there we go. All right. Uh, not a whole lot of logging happening. I don't think, uh, might not see too much in the, in the console. Uh, if you do see an issue, uh, again, like if you're in cursor, it's super nice. Cause then you can just add to the chat and be like, Hey, I got an error. Like, what does that mean? Um, but otherwise the whisper service is running in the container, uh, and it can do its thing. And like I said, this is whisper running locally. So technically we're, we're handling it as a service, but it's our own service. Um, so I have this set up to use the, uh, uh, the, uh, use your entire file system memory. Um, so it can handle much bigger files as long as wherever you're running, it has the memory to handle it. Um, so you could transcribe, you know, your two hour podcast or whatever. Uh, but in this case, this, this is a very short video. It's only like a minute, but we got our transcript back and it just comes back with just transcript. So nothing else except for, uh, the words, um, no timestamps or anything. Um, so Whisper service is running, so we're good to go on that. Um, this again is all within the context of a container of the Docker uh, Docker containers. Um, so I'm going to just work off of the backdoor that I created. So I'm actually going to create a file. Uh, so we have the text, so we got to do something with it. Here you would probably you know like connect up to Google Docs or something like that and create a file and put the text out there. Um, but I'm going to create a uh, an actual file. So we're going to write some binary and the content will just be that transcript that we just created. Um, so if I execute that, then we've got the binary. And then uh, I am going to write that file back out to the disk. And so again, kind of kind of take advantage of the way that I set this up. So if we do slash shared folder, get rid of the extra space, and then the file name, so that's the name of the video file. Uh, I'm going to do a dot replace and do not dot mp4, but dot text. There we go. Then we get a text file with the name uh, matching the video file that we the transcribed. Um, and it's going to put into that shared folder, which again is the context of the, the Docker container, um, but they are mounted together. So if we write to that folder, it should show up in our shared data folder. So it pops back out. Um, so we have a text file and it's got the transcript. Um, so we're good to go. Um, so mostly again, that's, mo that's mostly just to kind of show that it works and then we can, you know, kind of give you an idea of where to go. Like I said, you probably would end up doing something a little bit better as far as, you know, uh, connecting to back to, you know, Google docs or, or whatever, or send this off to another workflow or send it right off to like open AI or whatever. Um, but but that's pretty much it. Uh, again, this workflow is kind of kind of straightforward, um, just to kind of give you an example of like how this works from a Docker context. Um, but really, kind of the uh, the main main focus is that this whole thing is running inside of Docker. Um, so we've got a, a Docker, uh, a couple Docker containers that are now communicating together, running in it in, and also uh, Whisper. And this is something I'll hopefully continue to expand upon to make our our uh, self hosted video starter kit a little more flexible and a little more powerful as far as being able to transcribe video. Uh, grab transcripts and uh, timestamps rather and be able to do uh, more captioning and that kind of thing uh, and then hopefully add some ffmpeg functionality as well to be able to chop up video and that kind of thing so um that was pretty much it i wanted to kind of walk through docker um and running n8n in inside of a docker container um again uh n8n also provides their own self-hosted ai starter kit if you're just looking for more of like a, a an ai agent kind of route to go but you want to get started with docker um over there um that works too 
So otherwise I will provide links for, for everything that I've done here. I'll have the, the workflow as well, if that's useful, kind of specific to this use case, but hopefully it's also a, a nice like example of how these things work. So again, hopefully this is a great uh, intro into using N8N with Docker. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, I will have all the resources in a link below. So uh, definitely let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything else you want to see. Uh, so in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.